Hi, and welcome to Facts and Blog and Podcast. Well, as promised, our uh, director of sales, Pat Murphy, is back on the show for the first time in the studio setup. Every time yeah. we've had yeah. you before, it's had to be remote. Uh, so we are going to be doing our Facts and Move updates with him, as well as answering some audience segments uh, or audience questions for the next segment. Um, so, Pat, uh, first, thanks for being here. Yeah, it's going to be different. I hate how I sound when it's recorded remotely, so we'll see if that changes at all in person. I know, man. On the headphones, you sound great and nice and nice and, uh, nice and very whitish. I can't, I can't do the headphone thing. It'll just throw me off. It's all right. I'm just making sure that I don't lose you on, on the microphone. But, Pat, you know, the one of the reasons I like talking to you on, on the show is because you – kind of came up through the rungs at Faxon at a, at an interesting early time, you know, the, the business had already been started, but you were right here, like as soon as things started to take off. Mm -hmm. And so being able to kind of see it from, you know, ARAC had already been launched and all that kind of stuff, but you've been here through pretty much every other product entity, uh, that we've ever done and, and really getting into barrels and things and now the full firearms lines. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of curious where this ranks, this, this move and expansion ranks on kind of like your hierarchy of what, of what you've seen here. Uh, I think the move is huge. Um, it's it, like you said, I've been, been here since fairly early on. Um, and, and seeing the growth and the expansion has been huge. I mean, when I started, we had pretty much every key office personnel person within a small space within the gun room. Yeah. So imagine trying to talk on the phone, doing sales or customer service, and someone's test firing 40 feet from you. Yeah. Or someone's hammering on pins into the upper receiver and there's eight on every upper receiver. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, just constant hammering and banging and, you know, so going from that, that small space to having a, a spot that's really our own is going to be a big deal. I mean, you know, and, and seeing where the company's at now and, and the amount of space we need for all of the critical personnel yeah. um, and the floor space is crazy. You know, I, I, when I was early on, we, we only had a handful of actual facts and firearms employees. Um, it was a roll of the dice any given day if we were actually going to ship anything because our shipping guy was Bob and Britt's son and he was in high school and it depended on how much homework he had. Right. So, yeah. you know, I was doing sales. I was doing uh, laser engraving. You know, I'd do the normal eight to five and then I'd laser engrave from five to nine or five to ten. Yeah. Some days we were shipping. You know, we had we had people who are now high up and 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 critical parts of the company doing shipping, customer service, right, uh, laser engraving, packaging of products. You know, I've taken bulk care I've taken five hundred bulk carrier groups home with me over the weekend so I can sit there and package them. Yeah. Because it's like we got to ship these next week. So right, right. It's got to get done. Yeah. Um, you know, so seeing the 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 level that we're at now and in what is really a relatively short amount of time for sure is is awesome to see. Yeah, and I mean it, that's that's the thing that you know I keep bringing up on these segments, but facts and firearms itself is only you know like eight years old, um, and when you consider the, I mean yes we, we we have the legacy we have the history and and of facts and machining that's been around since the late seventies, but. Um, you know, them as our sister company now, firearms really only getting started since, you know, 2012. And that started with basically just the A-Rack and everything mm -hmm. came post that. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's important to remember because a lot of people that kind of align us with different peers, other firearms companies in the industry, a lot of those other companies have been around for a lot longer. The, than us. The, yeah. That's a, that's a big thing in our industry is, uh, a lot of people don't realize how big some people are mm -hmm. and how small others are that right. that they may consider to be, you know, direct competition or peers in right. the market. Um, you know, a lot of companies with with their social media presence and their and how active they are um, can can appear a lot bigger. And I think that has been something that um, we've done, mm -hmm. you know, people uh, for for as big as we are, people sometimes think we're 
10 times bigger. Right. Um, and then there's other companies that you would think are 10 times bigger than us that are half our size. So it's, right. it's just a, it's an interesting dynamic within our industry. Yeah, for sure. And especially with how long, you know, each one has, has been on, uh, you know, been a player in the market, you know, I think is a huge deal. Um, but let's uh, talk just a little bit about how the move um, kind of affects, uh, you know, sales and sales support and things, because obviously delivery goods is going to be positively impacted just with dedicated space, new machines, more staff, more space, mm-hmm. but also on the sales side, because when, when you started, you started, you know, like you said, you were doing multiple things, but you didn't start at Facts and Firearms as director of sales. Correct. Uh, so, I mean, what do you think are maybe some of the, the positive impacts that we could see from a, a sales customer support, what have you type type standpoint? Um, a, a lot of it is going to be just having a dedicated space for sales and customer service. Um, where we're at now, um, it's a smaller area. We're closer together. Um, you get two or three people talking on the phone at the same time. It can get a little bit loud. We're butted up against the machine shop. Right. So you get a lot of equipment running out on the floor. Mm -hmm. And people walk into our space from that area and they walk in sometimes and they're yelling because that's just the volume you have to talk at when you're walking through a bunch of machines. Right. So stuff like that where, you know, we can we can have a little bit more peace and quiet. We can have an area that's our own um, because we're in our machining businesses building, you know, the little things like putting stuff up on the walls and stuff, you know, when it's not your place right you feel a little odd doing that or you don't you know feel like it may necessarily be appropriate so being able to personalize our own space and everything there being facts and firearms is huge yeah and i mean one of the things that we've talked about more than once is the fact that you know, yes, this is an existing building that we're moving into, but with all the renovations and the addition that's being added on to it, it's, you know, it's essentially a brand new building, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty crazy when, when, uh, when we were looking at the building and I went over there and they were like, you know, I, we think this is going to be the one and I'm walking around and I'm like, I don't see it. You know, I <laughs> yeah. don't, I don't see yeah. it. And, it looked like an old bowling alley. Yeah. Like it was like yellow and brown and yeah. old and fluorescent. Yeah. C- cinder block walls everywhere. It's like, this feels a little dungeony. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy to see that within the last month or two, the amount of work that's been done, how much the space has really been transformed. Yeah. Um, you know, looking at just the shop floor. I mean, that space is, it's a night and day difference from, from what it was a few weeks ago. Yes. So, and, and that carries over into every space in the building. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things we've said before, but I feel like it's worth repeating, you know, a lot of manufacturing businesses will go through a shutdown period if they're mm-hmm. going to move. And and we are not, you know, as, as soon as we can take a machine offline just to move it, it gets set back up and put back online. You know, we're not actually scheduling any type of, of shutdown because we want to try to keep up with with orders and demand. And then once we're all moved in, be able to expand that some more with with personnel and, and new machines. So I think that's that's a big deal. And you and you want a nice space for your people to work, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere that is clean, somewhere that is fresh, somewhere that they feel like, yes, this is our own dedicated space. You know, you don't have like a stepbrothers mentality with your sister company, although we do stuff for each other. That's just how it works. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's that's an absolutely, uh, you know, a, a big deal just for the overall, um, you know, morale and uh, and things. Um, while you're here, though, one of the things that I did want to kind of give you an opportunity to speak to and maybe, you know, answer some persistent questions is just about during this pandemic and during this whole gun run, which is the biggest we've seen um, ever, and mm-hmm. not just we as yeah. Faxon, but the country, um, as a whole, you know, I, I think a lot of people, you know, maybe they learned about us because of our website or because of our social media or whatever. And sometimes, which is shocking to me, they don't always know that we have quite a large dealer network. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how many, you know, dealers do you think are in our network right now? Roughly active dealers, um, active, we hover in the 500 area. Mm -hmm. Um, Total overall dealers is just upwards of 2,000. 
Yeah. So there's a lot of shops that, that have access to our products and can get them, you know, and, and it ranges from the biggest online resellers all the way to the guy who got his FFL and does builds for buddies at home. You know, he, he's a dealer and has access to our stuff. So, you know, we do have a pretty large network and that's that uh, we, we, we attribute a lot of our growth to the dealer network for and, sure. and helping get our name out there and, and uh, you know, helping get that exposure, especially when you're a small company, you know, the, you're, you're trying to make it day to day. So, you know, the idea of maybe spending a bunch of money on advertising and things like that, it's just not possible, you know, even having a budget for that doesn't exist early on. So right. you, you depend a lot on those dealers to, to get you that exposure and and have your products in the mix with the other guys that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a chance at earning the business. And, you know, we're going to do some more official posts about it later. And, and we've talked about it briefly on the podcast before, but that is, you know, the, the way that we're set up, you know, we don't really restock our website you know, before mm -hmm. ahead of dealers. So, you know, if you're, if you're going through our website and you're like, oh man, I wanted to get this thing or I wanted to get that thing, uh, check out the dealer network and, and you could start all the way at the top. People like Brownells and Optics Planet, you know, carry our stuff. Um, and, uh, so, so don't forget uh, to check out the dealer network and we've encouraged those folks to also, you know, tag us in social media posts or let us know, uh, when they're about to release some of our product, uh, so we could let our audience know as well. So, you yeah, Yes, we're in full blown production. Yes, uh, we're still shipping. Uh, we're still <laughs> shipping out the dealers, and we're doing it, you know, all the way through this move too. So hopefully, only thing that uh, you all see is a bit of an increase. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's a big thing that uh, I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, you know, in in today's world, you have such such access to the actual people making the products that. Um, a lot of people forget that they are available other places. Yeah. So, I mean, we're making more than we've ever made before. We're selling more than we've ever sold before. Right. Um, everything we're making is already sold. Yeah. So, you know, you may not see it on factsandfirearms.com, but but it's out there. Right. Um, you know, just earlier today, I was I hopped into customer service to answer a few emails, and I'm, you know, I, I one one guy asked about an 18 inch gunner barrel, and I go. We're not going to have them for a little bit, but we just ship some to, you know, these three dealers and I'm sure they'll have them any day. Yeah. So that that's we try to encourage people a lot to not only sign up for our in-stock notifications, sign up for them in, you know, three, four or five different places because you don't know who's going to be. You don't know who's at the top of the list. You don't know who's next in line. Yeah. So, so and, they may be getting a big shipment. And that's the case for a lot of manufacturers right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even some of the, you know, the the big legacy brands in this industry, you know, are, are dealing with a lot of the same things with such a big gun run. Like what was the, the numbers that we pulled when we did the expert voice webinar, it was like by, by time we hit June or July, we had already surpassed the amount of like background checks. Yeah. I think it was like by the end of July, we were going to have the same number of background checks that we had had in all of 2019. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's insane numbers. Our industry already has been every month for the last, however many years has been a record breaking month. But I mean, right now is beyond what what I think anybody has seen, even going back to like Sandy Hook and, and things like that, that that caused big spikes. I mean, right right now is crazy. And and, you know, a, lo a lot of times people get can get a little frustrated because they're looking for something and just can't seem to find it. Um, but also, if you talk to somebody a year ago and told them that, hey, in six months, you're not going to be able to get toilet paper at a lot of stores, yeah. they would have never thought that was possible. <laughs> exactly. So You'll in, be looking a, for masks to yeah, wear. Yeah. 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 So it's 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 interesting times. Um, yeah. And the firearms industry is not immune to that. So, you know, it, it's it's great as far as business goes. But we also you know, there's a there's a negative side to it. We don't like not having something when somebody wants to come buy oh, yeah. it from you. Yeah. You know, it's not a great feeling. So. No, no, not at all. And, and so, I mean, just 
Keep that in mind, take it with a grain of salt. But I, I think the the thing that you could take from any of our move update segments uh, in the past several weeks is that uh, the the facts and family and the other folks that are involved with moving this company forward are stepping up to the plate, like understanding, hey, this is a spike. We know this is a spike. It's going to decline at some point. But we know that this is moving us and gun ownership in the United States, especially to a new level. And, and we want to make that commitment uh, uh, to, to the final firearms industry. Um, and with that in mind, uh, if you go to our website right now on our one of our homepage carousels, uh, the NSSF uh, has a great resource for voting. Uh, so if you are not registered to vote for the 2020 election yet, uh, they can get you helped out. You could click the link directly uh, on our website and search the hashtag gun vote uh, to get yourself registered and find the polling station near you. Hi and welcome. Hi and welcome. The Facts and Blog and Podcast. 